We get our identity by who we connect ourselves to. And family is one of the most important ways that we do that. We get our identity by who we're connected to, our family. But we do this in a number of different other ways as well. We do this by the schools we went to, our alma maters. I'm a graduate of Calvin College in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I don't know if anybody at our regional sites are here from Calvin, but we align ourselves with maroon and gold. That's part of our identity. We do this if part of our clubs and our hobbies. If you're a runner and you're part of a running club, then part of your identity gets formed by the group of runners that you run with. And we do this at the meeting house, right? We're housers. We all belong to this big fam family, and we identify ourselves by who we are connected with. So it begs us the question to ask, well then, how are we connected? And who are we connected to one another? In the 1960s, Stanley Milgram, a social psychologist, did an experiment. And he came to the conclusion, you can look online for it, but he came to the conclusion that the world is in fact quite small, that we are connected by a link of acquaintances either between two and 10 degrees of separation, and in the middle it's six. And this is where we get this idea of six degrees of separation, which turned to some crazy game called the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, you may have heard of that. But we are all connected. Now, Facebook decided to do a similar study now with the rise of social media since the 1960s. And in 2011, they did a study of over 700 million Facebook accounts, it's about a tenth of the world's population. And they concluded that we are 4.7 degrees separated from any acquaintance in the world. And last year, another study was done on social media, a slightly different algorithm, using 1 billion accounts. And the conclusion is that we are 3.9 degrees separated from everyone on the planet. Now, whether or not you agree with that or not, it is interesting to think about how we are connected to one another because our identity is often formed by who we are connected to. So degrees of separation, if you don't know what I'm talking about, here's essentially how it works. If you are an acquaintance of mine, if I know you, you know me, we are one degree separated. Now, anyone in your network that I don't know I'm now two degrees separated. And then anyone in their network that I don't know is three degrees separated and vice versa. Anyone in my network that you don't know, but you know me, you're just two degrees separated. But we are one degree separated if we know each other. And if you're like me, as I think about who I'm connected to, I care most about the people who are one degree separated from me, most of the time. <laughs> and then I care kind of a little bit about people I don't even really know, but I know that they're close to the people who are closest to me, right? And as you go three and four and five degrees, it's like, I don't even know you, I don't care, I don't even know who knows you. And, and we, we sort of lose our connection with people who are further afield. But it's still a very self-centered approach as to how to look at who we are connected to on this planet. As Christ followers, as we put God at the center, it's a very different paradigm because it means that the Holy Spirit links every single one of us as followers of Christ to God at the center only by one degree. We are only one degree separated from every other Christ follower on the planet. If God is at the center and we are all connected, then the next obvious question we have to ask ourselves is, well then how shall we live? And that is a little bit about what we're gonna be talking about today. So, whether you're a regional site or here in Oakville, why don't you pull out your notes, pull out your Bibles. Uh, here in Oakville, Bibles are at the back and at regional sites, they're just down at the front. And we're gonna be taking a look at this today. And there's a few things in your notes that you're gonna take a look at. The family of God lives integrated and interdependent, not isolated and independent from one another. And scripture is very, very clear about this. There are a number of different metaphors, a number of different ideas that is presented in scripture that helps us understand this idea that we are connected to one another by just one degree. Over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the John 15 passage where Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. It's not multiple vines with multiple strands of branches. We are all connected, branches to the true vine. Jesus is also called, called the key cornerstone in scripture and that we are living stones, that the cornerstone is the foundation stone and all the other stones align themselves to this one stone equally. Another example in scripture is that Jesus is called the head and we, his followers, are the body. We make up different parts, we come from different backgrounds, we have different gifts to give, but we are all connected to the head. Then there's this king concept, Jesus is our king, he is the king of one kingdom and we are all citizens, 
not of different countries, but of one kingdom pledging allegiance to our king. And then probably one of the most beautiful images of this idea of how we're connected is that God is our father and that we are his children. We are siblings with one another. 